video i am going to show you how to add the mysql into your spring boot project um, if you did not watch the spring boot initializer video uh, from my channel i'll give the link in the description please go and watch how to create the spring boot project so this uh, video is very focused to how to introduce or include mysql into your spring boot project so mysql is you know uh, it's a it's the most popular database uh, where you can save the relational databases i mean relational data set into the mysql database so as a first step go to the maven repository all right just open the google and type something like maven maven repository and uh, find the mysql connector do search and uh, what are you see a first mostly uh, find out the the latest by the date here you see that uh, uh, jan 192023 but this one seems to be one day before that you know as a rule just go to the latest one but this says this artifact is moved to the another package so again it just come back to the mysql connector the first one all right just take the latest version okay always come from the the top the first one from the top copy this uh, you know code and go back to your um, you know uh, spring boot code open the form file and uh, under the form file you see the dependency uh, in the dependency tag just put that at the bottom i mean inside of the dependency as the last dependency just add the mysql connector and you need to add one more repository called the uh, Spring Boot JPA. JPA is nothing but a Java persistent API, which means um, as, as a developer, we use a lot of variables. The variable is uh, basically a data holder. We we put a uh, values into the variable. Whenever we restart or stop the program, the variable or you know um, get lost, right? It is not uh, saved anywhere. But uh, when you save the data into the database, that 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 being a persistent, right? Even you turn off the program or shut down the computer, if you restart, the data will be there again in the database. So uh, that's what we call it as a Java persistent API. That means Java ensure the data you save it in the uh, you know database it it pers persist forever. I mean until you go and delete it. Okay, uh, just copy paste this both uh, repositories the one is mysql j connector the another one is the spring boot starter jpa all right as you do the modification in the pom file the visual code studio will recognize that you added some dependencies okay it will ask for you to synchronize you can set always or yes i i do just always okay so this is the first step okay the second step is that go to your resource folder and in the resource folder you can see one of the application dot property this is basically a property file where um, you know we are declaring some of the configuration information some some basic or a default uh, variable or initialization variable into the program all right so in order to begin with uh, i would tell you a few variables okay um, in the sense like uh, spring dot jpa dot database platform you know um, you know spring can connect variety of databases it could be mysql it could be elasticsearch it could be a mongodb or it could be a um, graphql i mean spring would connect almost every database okay so here we are saying that my database platform is org dot hibernate dot um, dialect dot my my s q l 8 l e c t all right just type like that so we are saying that my database platform is uh, hibernate uh, dialect and um, it is my sql 8 dialect all right and then string dot jpa as you type it will auto suggest that's a cool thing from the any um, basically the editor and uh, hibernate um, 
or ddl equal to type update okay there is a create and update something like that for now uh, just for you to make it easy type something like uh, update but you wanted to read much depth about this options you can always uh, read into the spring boot website all right and then uh, the next thing is now we are going to say where my database is all right spring dot database um, database dot um, url equal to it is um, jdbc dot or my sql colon um, i would say local host all right local host and uh, usually the mysql will will be under the 3306 as a default port and uh, under you can type the the database name okay this is the connection string we call it as this whole thing is a connection string all right so i would say that uh, trade is going to be my database all right so we can also have a pretty uh, smart options in the uh, spring boot we can say because in in the database or i would say in my mysql there is no such a database called a trade so i'm telling spring boot create database if not uh, exist which means if not exist all right so i'm telling that it's true which means when i run this program it will look for the mysql database under i'm going to you know tell you the the connection string for the data if the database called a trade is not there then create it so that's what i am defining it all right and then the next step is i'm telling uh, the configuration called string dot data source dot uh, driver okay driver class name equal to com dot mysql dot cj dot jdbc dot driver okay so we are telling basically a java program this is a driver i'm going to use this is the one we we installed via pop okay then spring dot data source dot username equal to in my local I have MySQL, uh, the MySQL username is equal to root and uh, spring dot data source dot password equal to password. I mean, I mean, you need to really type the, the root password of your MySQL, but in my case, my local machine has a password as a password. Okay, I'm just saving it for now. Don't worry about this kind of uh, the highlights. Okay. Uh, it says unknown property, but still uh, you can just leave it. Um, the, the, as we compile, it will take from the form. Okay. Now you go ahead and compile this program. All right. As I told you earlier, you can use the terminal uh, which is available inside of the Spring Boot. I mean the, the Visual Code Studio itself, or you can go to your command prompt where you can run. Okay. So I always run the you know execute in the command prompt pd software um java 7 trade this is a folder i have and i do run the sh run dot sh i think i told you on other day um what i have in the run dot sh right if you go to the run dot sh i i told you the maven mvn spring boot colon run is a command in order to execute the spring boot okay just save all and uh, run it let's wait for a minute because you know the, the we added the new dependencies uh it may take a time to install okay it throws some error here so it says that the failed to configure the database url the attribute is not specified and not embedded data source has been configured okay so which means spring boot is not recognized that there is a database in the system okay now let's go and uh, find out how to solve this case. All right, you know, debug what could be the issue. I'm just uh, clearing my screen. Um, now let's go back. Uh, as we configure, we find that there are some issue here, right? It also gives some, um, some indication that something is wrong. Now what you can go and do is, because Spring is uh, keep changing, or Spring is 
very fast growing community uh, framework so there will be could be some change okay spring boot uh, mysql connect just search it and try to open the uh, spring boot page um, where you can see and find out what could be your issue okay so these are all the things uh, we configured right um, you may just copy all these things and uh, you can find out what could be a difference here okay just i paste here and uh, okay these are all both are identical that's the reason it gives highlight but other than that uh, something is not identical okay uh, this one is changed okay so we can keep this one instead of the one we declared right we can remove this and uh, this one looks uh, okay right we can remove this one the what the one we declared but in this case it says that it's same but uh, okay we mentioned a database but it should be data source okay just remove it okay just save it now we you you save it all right go back and run all right sh uh, run dot sh okay i mean in my mac i do sh but for a windows users you can run um, maybe bat kind of command right okay um it just execute this time it really connected to the database the program is running you know uh, if you look at my previous uh, video you can go and find out how to uh, check this right uh, any spring boot i mean when you execute the spring boot spring boot will really run under 8080 that's what uh, the command form says here right this is running under 8080 okay just go ahead and type localhost and 8080 you see this one all right the things are running however let's go and find out there are some error okay this says that unknown database trade let's go and see the database all right i'm opening one more tab my sql u root okay sorry my sql u root and the p password okay so i'm going to type show databases uh, instead you can say use trade okay okay it says that there is no such a database then why this does not you know create the database right mentioned create database if not exist if exist uh, this looks right create database if not exist sorry a e s i e s t okay i'm so sorry i mean this are all um, uh, kind of variable uh, spring boot does not throw error but uh, i think it should it should throw error here but uh, we did not notice right um, sorry about this error i mean it's it's fine you can make a bug and you can always uh, debug and you can find out okay uh, this is the correct spelling exist okay if it does not exist create okay now you go ahead and see um, right you can you can kill and recreate but uh, in a in this previous video i told you like uh, the dev tools is a, is a one of the package i use uh, it is taking care of you know whenever i change the code it will automatically recompile okay now you go ahead and see the database okay the database is there maybe you can show tables it might not be there because we haven't written any a uh, domain object so far that's the reason it is not there but right now you see that database is created automatically right so that's where spring is you know really um, well uh, aligned with the database and it is taking care of creating a database taking care of creating a table and all now we can go ahead and create um, one of the table and then we can uh, you know really connect the database and create uh, some records in that in order to connect the table i mentioned uh, in under the video just go ahead and uh, create a new folder called uh, domain okay let's say domain all right under domain i am going to create a new file called uh, um, stocks like java file should have a capital letter it's a java requirement and i i use the singular um, in my class name okay I hit enter it just created a class name for me and here I'm going to declare my 
um, you know the, the variables all right um, now what we can do the first one is id right um, the id is really taking care of um, you know I, id in a database you know right every record will have a unique id or that's the primary id so if you put this uh, you know uh, a reference uh, a spring boot takes care of okay you are declaring a, a id then the, this id will you know correlate with the uh, database all right and uh, the further to this id we can say whether you are going to define the id as a, as a, a integer or or a string you know some some databases um, can have uuid based concept some database may have a number based uh, um, uh, you know record in this case i will uh, put it something like a long and uh, id okay id is a column which is uh, this annotation takes care of this is connecting to the database okay and uh, string um, so let's type name okay i'm going to save some name in it okay and uh, if you look at my uh, other domain object video that i'll give you in the comment section okay you can you can now tell the spring boot hey this is the domain object which must connect to my database okay so how you can declare you can go and say first this is the one of the entity annotation and then you can say this is the table it should be it should create a table in my database called a trade and the table name should be something like uh, okay stocks okay that's why i create it all right and uh, when there is a import um, you know error you can just go and uh, uh, click hibernate uh, annotations okay or you can type like a uh, persistence okay all right now this is done and you go ahead and uh, type this and uh, and right click and click source action you go and create a getter and setter okay and also you remember right whenever you create a uh, any um, a, a table make sure that you have a created at and updated at uh, column definition because it's a it's hygiene factor that you need to have them okay so in order to do that you can type date created at and uh, date updated at okay and uh, the import error you can go ahead and import the the utils uh, date class and uh, now um, it's better you can define what column this particular variable should relate to the stocks table okay so you can say like the annotation column and uh, you can type like a name this must be created at okay i'm going to use uh, this uh, you know a snake case all right just import this and uh, you can say that uh, this one is a definition of um, uh, nullable false and uh, column definition equal to um, let's say date time not null default is current these are all mysql direct syntax okay current time spam okay here because we mentioned this is a not null in the definition itself maybe we don't need this attribute at all okay and likewise you can go and put that into the update also in this case you can type updated at and again it's a time spam correct uh, but uh, this is the date and time and not null default is the current time spam but on update again i am writing just my sql syntax directly in my java program on update again it should update the current time okay current time spam okay so which means whenever a new record is created it will save the current time as a record time whenever the re same record getting updated this will go and update the updated time okay just uh, i'm going to save this the moment it saves 
uh, the database will get created. Now you need to make sure that up, up, I mean the getter and setter for the um, updated and not create set is getting generated. Now you do a simple save. Okay. In addition to that, what you need to do, you need to go and create a one more folder called a repository, right? Um, that's where your domain object is connecting to the uh, database in order to do the code operation like a create, delete, update kind of thing. Okay. So in the repository table, now we are going to um, create the, the, the table, all right? Um, in order to do that, just create a new file called, um, what is that, doc repository, okay, dot java, okay, now it's just created, okay, once it's created, what we need to do is just go ahead and uh, make this as a repository by annotation, okay repository in the sense the database repository where the data is getting really you know saved and uh, this is not really a class this is an interface to your database okay interface and uh, then we are going to extend this right extends this with the code operation so please watch my other video to understand why I am declaring all this we I have a very extensive example of uh, how you need to declare all these things, okay? So here I'm saying this this data table is uh, stock and uh, this is like a long variable, okay? And uh, the other variable I, I mentioned that uh, here I mentioned the string because that particular application use the UUID as a, I mean like a, like a alphanumeric as a ID for each and every record, but this particular database or program I am going to use long as a variable, okay. Um, now let's uh, just go ahead and uh, uh, do import, all right. Um, this must be like uh, the strings uh, repository, it says like it must be a public interface, right. That uh, it is stock repository and the third repository where I'm importing the stock. Stock is in this application. So, okay, just go ahead and uh, um, change this to code repository, okay, and then import this domain object. All right, now we have done it, okay. So, all right, we have done right and uh, so the table is created and the the table related repository also now created just now go and see whether the table is there okay show tables in my mysql okay the table is not really created okay then go ahead and see whether we have any error yeah okay there are some errors let's minimize a little bit i'm sorry if you don't read this okay um, it says there is an error with the, you know, ID. So it says that a stock has a no identifier. Every entity class must have a ID or embedded ID. I'm sure we inserted ID, right? But uh, what this ID? I mean, did we import the wrong thing? Uh, it could be, right? Let's check. Um, this is ID, but uh, this ID is related to, okay, okay, sorry, not this table, okay, and this should be like any other, this collections, okay, just go ahead and type, and we need to have a uh, Jagata Persistence ID, okay, just save it, now you go and keep watch your compiler, what it does, okay, now the error is gone, let's go and uh, look at the database now, okay. The database is there, right? Now go on to see description of stock. Okay, the ID is there and created it is there with the uh, current timestamp and uh, the name is there and uh, the updated at is there, okay? In this table, I'm going to have uh, the unique constraint 
uh, such that I don't want the name to be duplicated because in the stock the name will always be unique right so how can I do that I can go and add some constraint to it okay just uh, it enter here maybe let's say this is the uh, unique constraint okay constraints and uh, space and the unique constraint the name is like unique name and uh, the column names equal to you can add multiple columns to build the unique constraint in my case i am going to make just a name alone as a unique constraint all right so install the uh why throws here okay the comma and uh, unique constraint okay did i make any spelling mistake unique constraint okay sorry sorry for my bad typing okay and uh, we are going to put the unique constraint unique con okay sorry ah Okay, I, I do wrong. Okay, fine. All right. Then along with the unique constraint, I'm also going to create uh, the indexing feature of ASQL so that whenever I do a you know search, that will do a little fast search because indexing is very important in any database. Okay, so I'm going to create indexes. Um, this must be this one and uh, index and uh, the index must be name equal to again index of the name column i mean in your database if you don't think you need a unique constraint or index you no need to again even in this table i have many columns right but uh, uh, i'm creating the index only for the name column because i'm going to do the search of this name very frequently uh, like you you if you look at the gmail when you go and type the name of the a email recipient it automatically give the drop down of suggestion right which means the gmail is written such that if somebody types the name it automatically scan the entire database and it suggests the name that you are typing so it just gives a hint of the name right that's where the the indexing is very important so that the database will index the name of this particular table so that it will do the fast search and uh, i'm going to type column list and uh, it should be name i'm going to use the unique constraint yes the name should be very unique in my table okay all right in this particular table yes name must be unique okay if you are typing if you are creating a database like uh, the employee the employee name can be cannot be unique right there will be multiple employees with the same name right maybe the employee id could be unique correct so i mean based on your requirement you can define this uh, 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 you know constraint let's save this okay now we've done this all right so now we we have this record we have this and now um, the table is ready the repository is ready now how i'm going to you know save this record maybe you can create a test case in order to see whether the data is getting saved or you have a controller already right whenever you hit the controller you can go ahead and see whether it is getting you know saved so can i just go ahead and uh, use this res controller in order to do the code operation okay so here let's see i'm auto wiring right i'm auto wired what the repository uh, let's say stock repository um this this is the um, you know data type and uh, this is my variable okay I copy this whenever somebody type um, okay whenever somebody post the name right okay we don't need this uh, declaration okay say somebody hit like a name and then they will type the name uh, in other way i think i i explained the other controller where we can pass the name as a request parameter right 
it's better way we can use that okay let's say save okay uh, save same all right i'm sending the request parameter okay and when i hit the save what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, create a new stock okay stock new stock okay and i'm i'm trying to show a very simple and basic example there is advanced way you can write a constructor method that will you know take the entire the payload is automatic uh, uh, domain object so that i'll cover in the advanced section okay here i'm creating a stock and i'm setting the name of the stock okay um the name will go as a stock name right and uh, white throws error okay i did not save this yet right in the stock repository i'm going to save this okay save this stock now this will be saved in the uh, database okay just remove this in this case return i am going to return this particular stock okay then in that case what we should do we need to uh, return the data type as such instead of other variable okay so i am saving this sorry i am saving this um, again this is the get method only okay so don't worry i am just giving a simple use case okay then i will cover later how you should write okay read a name when i hit read then it will go and uh, uh, find the record i okay i will pass the name and uh, it will find from the repository okay now i am going to the stock equal to repository dot find first by name okay name is a so i am saying to the spring boot find the first entry uh, from the stock repository by what by name column okay when i type name it will go directly and check uh, against the name column because name is a column in the database correct yeah okay you may wonder why i don't um, i did not write the column definition to the name uh, variable right it really not necessary unless you, you want to really declare like this is the how what length it should be whether it accept null something um, i mean we can cover that i think you you look at my the domain object video and that will cover a lot about uh, the various annotation here okay so in this case find by name and i am passing the name okay um and uh, this time it is not a save right it will find the stock and it will return the stock okay now it throws error because in the repository there is no such a method you may wonder see the save how it does because the spring boot the curd repository we return sorry we we return the repository right we extend we return a class which is extension to the curd repository the curd repository has like a save method inbuilt read method find by id method it has many inbuilt function okay but whenever we write a custom function we need to write for it okay so here just click and click the create method that's it spring boot will take care of this automatically okay that's it you save all and uh, okay just go ahead and uh, hit press nothing uh, how you can call this controller you are going to call by api and uh, you are going to save with a parameter of name right okay so in the database you go and do the select star from stocks right so nothing is there now you go ahead and type like a name sorry slash api uh, name equal to current okay just hit enter what happened if you look at it the name is a parameter i am passing as a name and the value current and we create a new stock variable you know in the stock the id is automatic okay so whenever we record uh, save a new record the id will get generated automatically the created and the updated that we define we defined as automatic right here it's a default it will put a current time so i no need to save 
add any of the value because it is automatic so i set the name i am creating a new stock variable i am setting the name of the um, the name variable and i am saving it after i saved i am simply returning the stock variable okay so that's what once i done i am i am seeing this result now go ahead and type whether we have that record in the database okay it is not really saved okay why because um let's check the name is here the name we set we saved the name because if we really save i'm sure it will you know return along with the id here it it did not save that's the reason you know uh, it is being empty for now okay let's uh, let's think why it is not really uh, getting saved here okay um the one reason it could be like we mentioned the id as a automatic so in the sense it should have it should have you know uh, added the id as a default but in this case um, we mentioned the stock with the id of the variable um, the id is checkout of assistant id so still it is not getting saved let's try let's see why it is not getting saved in this scenario let me go and set id as 1 and uh, it will throw error because it's a long variable so i need to add l now save it okay and go here now again hit okay i mean it's not okay it's compiled right yeah and go and find out okay it's not still saved okay let's see what is i mean you don't need to really save this id for sure at all because it will automatically you know reserve the id for it i am you know i am trying to you know show you how you can use even the set variable in order to set the ids okay i'm just removing this and uh, i simply save this and let's find out what could be the issue i created a new stock as i create the id is there name is i set this variables are there okay all is fine um the sc stocks right it's a big hint date and time where car primary but here somewhat i see that this is a primary key but the default is being a null okay i think we should have mentioned like this is a i would say auto generate or something okay um can you go and type like uh, generate id uh and uh, no right but even we said the id it did not save okay let's say run boot id assign automatic uh, auto increment okay just go ahead and find out okay the generated value is what they defined okay maybe you can just copy this maybe this is a relevant uh, uh, redundant i would say and copy this and maybe you can add here and um, let's say so there there is some conflict uh, okay let's go ahead and uh, import the chart and save here after you save let's see it auto compiles okay still if you look at it this won't really um it is not really you know changing the values at all at this time let's give a try okay you go ahead and uh, hit the save button it's not really saving okay um what we can do we can drop this table maybe because this definition is something wrong okay um let's say drop table stocks okay now there are no tables okay show table empty i'm just going to make some you know quick small change just save in order to recreate the table okay 
uh, I just deleted, I saved it. Uh, now the Spring Boot will recompile and this time I go and uh, show table. It will again auto create even though I deleted it. If you, if you have some data, existing data, please be careful. You, do, you should not delete, okay? You need to use the modified definition in order to, um, you know, change the database structure. Um, so the SC stocks, okay, this time it says that auto increment. You remember earlier it was not like that, but uh, this time it has auto increment, okay? Um, now let's give a try. Yeah, we are getting the stocks and we set the name and we save into the repository. Real error, right? <laughs> the biggest problem what we did is here, I'm calling this API the root method, okay? So the API slash. So this is what it is keep throwing. Uh, but we did not even call this method. That's a blunt mistake. Okay. Now you go ahead and add after API save. Okay. That's the way it is written, right? This is the root controller under save. Now you go and hit. Okay. It throws an error, right? At least good. Okay. It says that um, what is the error here? Um, the constraint null could not execute the constraint is null created that cannot be null all right so it really asked for the created that and updated that uh, to be defined but what the mistake we did here is we should have mentioned the created that and updated that as timestamp okay so just go ahead and create created timestamp okay because we no need to manually add the time and in this case let's type like a update timestamp okay um, just uh, import this and save all right and let's give it a try to recompile it's done and go ahead and uh, hit now okay you see that record is really saved um, so here it, it saved the name and it just returned the saved value, okay? Uh, it's a mutable object, which means when you save, the saved value will again return into the stock uh, variable. So that's the reason, even though we did not set the name or a create, I mean, the, even though we did not set the ID or a created at and updated at values, still you see this, uh, you know, the created at and updated at values are set very well. Now you go ahead and uh, check in your database okay you see the values getting now saved now let's go and read the value okay read and hit i read the value now just go and type something like okay it throws red nothing right because there is no this particular name in the database correct but if you type the right name right it will go and find the record from the database okay how it happens it comes here and read the name column name the the parameter we pass and it pass the name to the database and uh, this is the spring boot repository function it's just one line function spring boot will take care of automatically and it simply return we don't need to even have a two line unless otherwise you know we are going to do something with the stock variable you can directly return okay so save this and again it will be the same effect okay i hope uh, this video is useful. Um, please watch the other videos, the, the previous video of how to generate the Spring Boot initializer and the uh, Spring Boot domain object creation where I mentioned uh, how you can create this uh, domain object in a basic level and advanced level in other video. If you watch that and uh, you can see how advanced we can manage this Spring uh, domain object variable. Thanks for watching. Bye.